Hello, welcome to uh, another very, very great edition of Fifi Manfred on YouTube. Do not go away because today there's a lot to unpack for you. Thank you very much for choosing us. So, of course, you are going to do a post match analysis of all the games that have gone on. Um, Chelsea, shambolic again. Um, say, oh, Chelsea, Nasa Obofi against a team like Burnley. It's a must win game. You just cannot afford to say, over dropping points against Burnley. But guess what? Chelsea. They manage so some drop points against Burnley and they didn't get the needed points. I thought say, that is a game that should have been a must-win game for Chelsea. It was non-negotiable. So non-negotiable. But Chelsea found a way to mess things up again. And then there are lots of games that we're going to talk about. There's something that Cole Palmer said that there's no way Cole Palmer should have said that. Because how do you go on and tell act, act as if your other teammates were bad whilst you were good? Cole Palmer himself and may say lots of chances. Sit there, said to one man, you need to go upon my message on Messi. And it was symbolic. Look at the English Premier League table. Look at where Chelsea should be. Look at where, if they had won the game, they could have been. At some point, it's time Chelsea were just five points off seventh place. I mean, what's all of this thing? And you see, it is the time Mauricio Pochettino has to sit up. Mauricio Pochettino has to sit up. Because if from now to the end of the season, he is able to psychologically inspire his players to manage games and win it, then that is it. This is not even necessarily about tactics or whatnot. Essentially, it is hinged down the psychological part of the game. Because how do you go up by one go to zero? Somebody goes down by a go to zero. Yes. Over second half, I consider a fluke. Once you consider a fluke, then you wait sure say you are supposed to manage a goal. You get the equalizer in the 88th minute. Then you sit down and get a few minutes later, Omunia equalizer. No? Then you sit down and you ask yourself, say, okay, um, it's just the players that didn't perform more. That is symbolic. And you see, if Chelsea are sacking Mauricio Pochettino, they need to sack the sporting directors too. Hey, no negotiable. If Chelsea are going to sack Pochettino, sporting directors are some more call. Because they've not done a enough, good, enough, good enough job. I'm not going to Mauricio Pochettino buy. I'm not going to this kind of frail players buy mentally and tactically. So if there's going to be a changer, it has to start from them. And for me, it's on head of. I see. So let's get into all the games. Yes, that's in a nice Every game there, of course, the English Premier League game. But there is a big game. Arsenal versus Manchester um, City. The best discusses are games in your mouth. Tactically, there is a lot of drama, of course, just before I took my seat here. Now, Manchester United actually first go against um, Brentford. But then Brentford have done the unthinkable. And then they've gotten the very, very good equalizer for It tells you how much of the quality of Brentford side. Uh, we will discuss all of that as well. Um, Torian Mosper did a brilliant job by coming down by go to zero down. At home at the Torian Mosper Stadium against Luton. They made it by two goals to one via Song Hini goal. Of course, it took a deflection. That's quality stuff. We'll look at the English Premier League table. We'll just oppose it to what went on in the Spanish La Liga and the Barcelona game and what that means to everybody. So stick and stay with me. And then let's get into the analysis. Now, but see, let's start with the Chelsea game. Say Obi Eka Chairman say. Mauricio Pochettino has to leave Chelsea. I think I've gotten to the point where I can agree, honestly speaking. I think they made me a dear to me. Sir Pochettino may have lost himself. And seriously, Ocean Mauricio Pochettino team you know, playing against Berlin it was a must win game. In fact, it's a penalty no Mojima Chelsea. It was not a penalty in the first place. It was not a penalty. It was a very, very questionable penalty on Mojima Chelsea in the first place. And Kupama Shesa But before that, Kupama, Nicola Jackson, almost everybody, and Mesesites. Key amongst them are Kupama. And you see, I ask myself, say, is it because Chelsea lacks leaders in both boxes? Or it is just the coach not being able to coach the psychology of the players to the level where they can manage games and so much such that they can have the leadership that they are supposed to have in both box and now. Because, you see, and this is a point where I want everybody that watches this video to comment. On an average of every video, we get about 1.5k views. And I want all of you, I want all of those comments to come in. Let me hear from you. Even from non-Chelsea fans, is it Chelsea that lacks... They're coaching to get the psychological edge. Or it's just the fact that it's a personnel matter. So much so that Chelsea doesn't have the leader. Because the chances Chelsea got in the box, Chelsea played over 33 shots. 
How do you play 33 shots? And they score just two. How? Okay, let's start like this. But your team has made a team very transitional. So it's always vertical. Chelsea doesn't control games. Chelsea doesn't control games at all. Every time, it's very transitional. The game is just ding dong. It's like basketball corner, but very vertical. And there's a problem with that because you don't tend to trans control games. But against teams like Burnley, because they are very stubborn and they'll come and press you high, they leave spaces in behind. That's why it's important that when they leave spaces behind, the likes of Modric can punish them. And Chelsea get quality chances to punish Burnley. But the quality chances you get in the box for the striker, Nicolas Jackson, quite a couple of them, you're able to manipulate the ball so, so well, so that you have a gaping goal at you. Now, you have the calmness to slot that the far post. No one will keep a nine. I mean, that's outrageous, in my opinion. Honestly speaking, and you're unheard of. And I find it very, very bizarre, pa. Honestly. Then you look at the likes of Kopama. At the end of the game, Onu Kopama say he and his players are to sit up. And I said, the players are to sit up. Yes, it starts from him. He was shooting at points that he was not supposed to shoot when the game began. Mudrik Mudrik can open up and he's shooting. Same for Conor Gallagher. Shamoli game, honestly speaking. But the chances were there for the taking. Because the... Brahim Sterling has to go. I think that, see, Raheem Sterling has just gotten to the point where he has to understand that the Premier League has passed him by. And he, he just has to try and leave Chelsea gracefully at the end of the season and then look out for another league. Because seriously, how do you get that chance at the 88 minutes and then you can't even hit the target? And it's very nauseating and very, very difficult to still work honestly speaking. Trust me. And Pochettino wants to look himself in the mirror. In the pre match analysis, Porto say, um, Chelsea should have been fourth. Second half performances, Chelsea should be 18th. Second half performances, Chelsea should be 18th or 9th or 17th thereabouts. Because that performance is pathetic. Especially in the second half, we lead the first half, now but second half, now very shambolic. Then Chelsea lead the first half, now second half, now very shambolic. It has been happening several times this season. And for me, I think that. The team will just the ownership, the team, everybody will just look through. Let's see what no goes now. For me, I quite I continuously will tell you that I'll make my judgment at the end of the season. But in moments like this, trust me, I will agree with everybody that says that Port should go. Seriously. Seriously. I'll agree with everybody that says that Port should go. Because why shouldn't Port go actually? Why shouldn't he go? What's, what's the main reason why she didn't go? Because everything that he's doing right now, in, oh, sorry. It's, it's, it's a tough call. It's a tough call, trust me, for everybody. And I, and I, and I feel for Chelsea fans. It's a tough call for you. And, um, but yeah, that's exactly how the season has become. And then we just don't know how it's going to pan out for the rest of the season. But we need to talk about other games. And so, of course, uh, our English in the league. And I think that. Uh, we just saw a blockbuster of a game, Manchester United versus Brentford game. But even before that, Mohamed Kudus is the king. See, since Abedi Pili, there has been no player in the history of the country, Ghana, our top guy like Mohamed Kudus. Brilliant player. Playmaking from the, the ball carrying, the dribbling ability, the scoring, the chance creation, everything that you want from him. Mohamed Kudus gives you that. And today, he took that West Ham team on his shoulder. Made things happen, but in the field, he was quality power, and that's the kind of quality I get from a player like Mohamed Kudus. And for me, he is one, he's the signing of the season thus far. The only problem is that it was against a Newcastle team that were resolute, that were very aggressive, that wanted to turn things around, and they managed to turn things around, especially um, at 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 a time side. They did a brilliant job at turning the game around. I think that. Social player beats uh, Mohamed Kudus and the things that he did. He started from the left hand side, set up a goal, scored a goal himself, and he was good. I mean, that was excellent goals also from um Shane Longstaff came on to miss a chance. Have Ivan scored two? It was a very, very good goal for him. He was excellent in that regard. And then the Chelsea game came. Chelsea was shambolic, of course. I've said that already. And Tony was expecting the game around. 
and of course Manchester United. I, I've consistently said that. Look at the bad game that Manchester United played. And I, I don't know what Eric Tehag is waiting for because Eric Tehag bought all ball. The game's not bought. They are so bad. He doesn't seem to inspire anything. Born or born in a two drop, nothing goes through it. And at the beginning, I thought, okay, they have to be given some time to build and get the players that he wants, then can make judgment of him. But seriously, you look at Eric Tehag and you look, you look at the kind of coaching he's in at United, and you ask yourself, can this really change? Because it doesn't look like it's going to change actually, even if it is not now. Because born or more born in a, there's nothing to write him about. Brentford were, were great, they were quality at, at almost every phase of the game. And nearly that Missy Mount goal could have stored everything and changed the whole narrative of the game. But then again, it was good response from Alvin Tony holding up play and then setting up that equalizer for Brentford. And for me, that's the quality that I guess from a player beats Ivan Tony. Look at how Licha pushed him out right. And then he sent the ball into the space that was there. And then they were able to slot in and get a equalizer. And I think that Brentford are a very, very quality team in there. So right now in the English Senior League table. This is exactly how the English Junior League table looks like right now. And we'll talk about it. Arsenal is still on top with 64 points tomorrow. Um, against Manchester City. Then there is Man Liverpool also here, second with 64 points. Man City 63 points. Aston Villa 59 points. Toria Mosfet is on fifth with 56 points. Manchester United 48 points. West Ham 44 points. Newcastle 43 points. Brighton and Hove Albion 42 points. Um, Wolverhampton Wanderers 40 points. Also went down. Then Chelsea over 40 points. The Hampton Wanderers about one more game than Chelsea. Chelsea wins that and then go to um, the game against Brighton. But that game is against Arsenal. So it's the top game for, our, for Chelsea. Chelsea needs to win side games. Like and all the teams that are on top of Chelsea have played more games than Chelsea. So Chelsea over one more game outstanding over English Premier League. Game. And that's it for Chelsea Football Club. And we'll see how that goes in the rest of the games now. I can in the Italian Serie A also. And there was a very big game, Napoli up against Atlanta. Um, excellent Napoli side, but of course, they were not good enough. Atlanta, Atlanta, Jasperini team, winning by three goes to zero. Um, Genoa, Etnefi, any for Senoni, but one one. Torino, they win one goal to zero against AC Monza. Gladio, SHT, the friend of Juventus, one goal to zero after um, Mauricio Saria, where we won. Then, of course, AC Milan, by Rafael Leal. I've, I've said it several times that for me, Rafael Leal is the best out right. Creative player that can get from, apart from Mohamed Salah and Kylian Tony but he makes things happen. And um, albeit in the last few seasons, he has not really been there, but the glimpses are there when he gets into a good mood. He shows you the quality that he possesses as, 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 as a wide winger, wide creator in there. Thomas Tuchel has given up on the German Bundesliga, and I think they're rightly so. Uh, for me, I think that sometimes things just don't work out, and there are certain times where things just don't work out for you. and. Thomas Tuchel going to Bayern is just one of them where it didn't work out for him. And um, Dortmund has been able to win their first day at the Classic Cup in over a decade. And that, that's that's pure good stuff from Eden Thesic. He has managed the Dortmund team so well. He got the best out of the team. Sometimes his team is um, lack, they, they lack that um, ability to control games. They lack that final pass, like that final bite up top. But then he has managed to build and hone such a great team. Uh, now they get the results and get a job that eating. I think it's quality job from Eden Thesic and the job that he has done to go and get that very, very important win uh, against uh, Bayern Munich, especially at the Allianz Arena, because Dortmund weren't winning at the Allianz Arena. Getting the win at the Allianz Arena is a very, very important one for them, and I think that it's a very good one for them now. Now, um, Barcelona um, scored by a goal to zero against FC Las Palmas, and it has a huge telling. On the Spanish La Liga now, Real Madrid they have 72 points, Barcelona 67 points, um, just about seven more points. No, not six, six more points to go between themselves. Five actually between Barcelona and Real Madrid. Uh, Madrid have one game in hand over Bonyam Yad Mochina against Athletic Global. Very, very difficult game um, without Vinicius Junior, but then of course, um, Jude Bellingham air returning for that game now. But then again, I'm expecting that Madrid can get a job done in that game that they are playing against Athletic Global. It's uh, weekend of games, but tomorrow there's the big one. Arsenal versus Manchester City is a title defending one in there. Then there's Brighton versus Liverpool. Brighton, Liverpool, of course, one for Arsenal, Man City, of course, for the Etihad. Arsenal needs to make sure that they go to the Etihad to get a job done. It is the ball is in your court. Beat the Kings and become the king. It's as simple as that. 
and Arsenal need to get it together. Guys, I'm sorry to all Chelsea fans who are in a bad taste as it stands now. But then again, uh, we need to call it a day. Get back to you later. Enjoy the rest of your holidays.